Hello, hello, and hello to all of my Aquarius. This is your midweek Wednesday reading. Aquarius, this video may go up on Tuesday, the 4th of July, but this reading is for the 5th of July through the 5th of August. Let's get right into it. We are still experiencing the full moon phase. We are in a full moon phase. And so still get your rest, still uh, protect your energy, um, still charge up your gemstones and crystals if you feel like you need to, still think about the things that you need to banish or release. Um, it's a great time for releasing because the light is still illuminated inside of you enough to know, okay, what do I need to finally go ahead and release, right? And if I feel like I'm not strong enough to release those things, Maybe I need, maybe there's some, a chakra that's out of alignment or chakras that are out of alignment. Let's get into it. Let's see what your cards have to say, Aquarius. Let's go. Let's see if we can help you to go ahead and release in love. Release in love. Let's go. The energy has already been cleared, Aquarius. So let's see what your cards have to say. Let's see what your cards have to say. Let's see. Let us see what your cards have to say. I'm talking to you if you have Aquarius anywhere in your birth chart, even if you're on the cusp of Pisces or Capricorn, I am talking to you. Uh, you may be feeling, if you're watching this video on uh, Tuesday, you're still feeling the effects of the moon in Capricorn, but you will soon feel the, the effects of the moon in Aquarius. So if you want to write down these questions, Aquarius, you can write down the questions. I'll make sure you get these before the end of the video. Let's do it. All right, victory, V-I-C-T-O-R-Y, Six of Wands, the Emperor card. We have the Hang One. We also have the Four of Pentacles, the Page of Swords, and also the Knight of Pentacles. Somebody has victory over something that was trying to, you, you may have felt delusional, but it was, you have victory over something that was trying to rule over you. Some type of energy that was trying to throw your solar plexus chakras out of alignment, right? And so you weren't imagining things, but because Neptune is also retrograde, Neptune, Pluto, and Saturn are currently retrograde you weren't imagining you know someone who was trying to throw your shock your uh, solar plexus chakra out of alignment they were causing digestive issues they could have been causing kidney or liver problems their energy just being in your universe um they could have even um their energy could have caused you to be even allergic to certain foods um could have just really thrown a lot of things off could you could have caused um allergy an, an allergic reaction to things could have caused you to have uh, chronic fatigue um, dealing with energies that are very narcissistic and just very low self-esteem energy, trying to project that into your water. You're an air sign, but you're a water bearer. And so trying to project that into your emotions, your feelings, um, trying to project their low vibration energy, that God, that God complex onto you. And you said, nope, I'm better off without it. So source is saying you finally got on your horse and you finally got away from that energy on your horse, in your car, your buggy, wherever you got, but you got away from the energy. So kudos and congratulations to you all Aquarius. That's a, that's a, um, part of the phase, a part of a phase within this cycle that you decided to, I need to go ahead and close this out for good. Right? So you can get your solar plexus chakra back in alignment. I'm going to um, link a video to some guided meditation for your solar plexus chakras underneath. And that same channel has guided meditations for all of the chakras. But since it, we're leading with fire, source wants you to get that core strengthened, right? Core strengthening exercises like core strengthening yoga, some kind of core strengthening. You can do Pilates if your doctor says it's okay um, to take some kind of a courageous act. And that was a courageous act for somebody to say, I'm closing that door for good. I'm just closing the door because that kind of energy will try to ram its way back into your life and find some kind of way. If they feel like there's a crack in your foundation, they'll bully you, try, try to bully you into it, Aquarius, for just getting back into your life. They'll try to manipulate you into it by first trying to warm up to you and then striking, you know. And so this energy has already done enough to burn their own um, they burned their own bridge when you gave them access to your universe. So it doesn't matter how recent it was or how long ago it was. You're not holding a grudge, Aquarius. If anything, your life has gotten much better without them. So any anxiety that you may be feeling, it's only the anxiety you may be feeling from this full moon that we had. But remember, we had a full moon in Capricorn, but we also felt the, the effects of a moon in Sagittarius at the same time. So the moon in Sagittarius was helping you to learn how to adapt, not be so fixated. So so rigid, right? 
But that moon in Capricorn was like, let's bring it on home and let's close it out. Sa uh, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and it's one of your ruling planets. And Cap and uh, Saturn is a very serious planet. It's really about setting rules, traditions, structure in your life. And so interacting with these types of energies, there wasn't a whole lot of structure in your life. There wasn't a whole lot of rules, at least when it came to certain types of people. And so now you've decided, nope. You burned a bridge. I'm not holding a grudge. Whatever is going on outside of my universe, of no concern to me. So somebody has definitely been putting in the energy work, just working very hard, nurturing yourself in the meantime. And also, um, so source is saying, don't give it a whole lot of thought. Be very conservative with your thought because again, source is saying, hang in there. You weren't delusional, but now you're using your imagination to dream bigger. Remember, Neptune is the planet of imagination and transcendence. You were not imagining their bullying energies. So even if you had, if, even if you have to come in contact with certain energies that's like that, you can just say ahead of time, they haven't burned me yet, but I can see how they interact with other people, how they talk about other other people, how they, how they just, how they move, how their spirit moves, then, then I can be in the, in the, in their crosshair at some point. Let me just go ahead and just go ahead and just remove myself from, um, from, uh, interaction with those types of energies. If you, if you can help it. Here we have the Two of Pentacles. We also have the King of Swords. We have the Ace of Wands, Ten of Pentacles, Nine of Swords, and the Universe. Universe is definitely in your favor. Definitely, definitely, definitely working in your favor. Um, and so you want to, you want to, like I said, you want to hang in there. The Universe says, "I got your back, your side, your top, your bottom, everything." So you want to put that fire now that you've moved on from something into something else, like something that nurtures your spirit. Some people like to dance. Some people are, could be DJs. Some could be musically inclined. Whatever it is, Aquarius, that's where God wants you to put your your energy behind that, and not you know spending a whole lot of time um, anxious about why is this coming up in my spirit? Because we're still in that full moon phase, even though the moon is not 100% illuminated, we're still feeling the effects of it. And so for some people, it's harder to go ahead and leave some bridges burned because you're trying to make it make sense in your mind. Like, why, why do I, why am I thinking about this? And why do I feel that anxiety? If you're feeling that anxiety and it's causing you digestive issues or causing you to have heart palpitations or stress or whatever, you absolutely don't need it in your universe. You want to put that fire behind because these energies don't know how to use their fire properly. If people know how to use their fire properly, you know, their solar plexus chakras are in alignment. So they, uh, so, so without their energy in your life, you feel powerful. You feel more confident. You feel like you have mental clarity. You feel like you are really a leader. Like you can really do this thing called life. You feel motivated. You feel strong willed. You feel more charismatic, but with those energies in your life, you can feel low self-esteem and start feeling depressed, burned out, especially since you're an air sign and the element of air is with the heart chakra. You can feel like your heart chakra is out of alignment. So as a humanitarian, you may want to automatically go in and try to save energies like that. And you just keep getting burned out or burned or bullied or cause of low self-esteem, you know, and you're just like, wow, I'm just letting certain energies just stay in my universe. And it's just, I feel like I'm carrying the weight of their world on my shoulders. And so I do see you moving on from this. I see you moving on from this. See you moving on from this nightmare. Here we have the nine of swords. Some people don't realize their energy is a nightmare because they're, they're just their energy, how they operate, because they're not open to, because they have a God complex. They're not really open to hearing whatever your definitions of, you know, love, trust, um, uh, healing, gratitude, compassion, connection, forgiveness are all about. They're not interested in any of that. All they're interested in is um, is what they can project, that very narcissistic energy, what they can project onto you to try to make you feel some kind of way. And so they'll use their job title, they'll use their, their status in your family, 
Um, they'll use anything that they feel like is above you to cause you to feel less than. So out of your universe they go. Here we have the Ace of Wands. Your third eye is wide open. And so when we're talking about third eye, the third eye, we're talking about your brow chakra, right? So your vision is clear. Your spiritual vision is clear without them in your universe. Your intuition is clear without them in your universe. Your dreams are more vibrant without those types of energies in your universe. Your insight is sharper without those types of energies in your universe. Your perception is clearer without those types of energies. Um, your psychic abilities just come alive, just burst, just more vibrant without those types of energies in your universe. And so somebody is starting to see it for what it really is. Here we also have the King of Swords, King of your thoughts. So you, you, somebody is like, wow, I didn't realize how much alive I become without certain energies in my life. Why would I want them back? And if you don't think that they know what they, they don't know what they're doing or that they're not aware, they do. That's why when you come around those types of energies, when they say or do things, they have that shifty eye. If you really pay attention, they're just shifty eye because they're waiting for somebody to correct them because they're always in fight mode. They always want to, they're always on that, I wish somebody would say or do something kind of energy. They have no regard for people's feelings whatsoever. And if you say something, you're the one that's extra sensitive. That's how they try to pull people in. It's always something about them. Oh, they're really a nice person. Well, just speak up. You should have said something. They don't give you time to process things. So kudos and congratulations to you all, Aquarius, for, you know, like I said, leaving them outside of the universe, letting people's fire consume them. Kudos and congratulations to you for that. Kudos and congratulations to you for that. All right, Wheel of Fortune. Here we have the Strength card, the Magician card, the Ace of Cups, the Page of Pentacles, and the Ace of Pentacles. All right, so there could be an Aries. There could also be a Leo, you know, involved too, or somebody who's on the cusp of that. What are the signs on the cusp of um, uh, on the cusp of Aries would be, because Aries is the first sign in the Zodiac, could be Pisces, because Pisces is the last sign of the Zodiac, um, or Taurus, could also have that kind of energy for somebody. It could be any zodiac sign. It really could be any zodiac sign. And then also Leo could be on the cusp of Cancer or Virgo, right? So again, bottom line for you, the bottom line for you is what protect your energy. Overall, it doesn't matter who it is, protect your energy. Protect your energy, right? Because this is your year. This is your year. You don't need those types of energies attached to you at all in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Here we have the Magician card. So very clear messages are coming through to you all that you're not delusional when it comes to certain zodiac signs. You're at least your experience, right? So you're not you're not you're not judging those zodiac signs outside of your universe. You got to remember everybody is unique in their own way, Aquarius. That's why some people misunderstand Aquarius because your your um your your power is in your sword right and so if you don't know how to use your sword properly if or if it's out of alignment it'll cause you to have that when i get low in my emotions i'm going to just say anything or take some kind of action towards people because i don't know how to use my sword i don't know how to use and the sword is connected to your thoughts and your power i don't know how to use my power Right. And so that's why sometimes people misunderstand Aquarius, because, again, that, that uh, element of air is connected to the heart chakra. So if somebody's uh, definition of love, trust, healing, gratitude, compassion, connection, forgiveness is not the same as yours. And you don't know how to properly communicate that when you see that they they you, you all don't have the same definition of that. If you don't communicate that up front, Aquarius. And, and you're dealing with somebody who is arrogant and you go right into that humanitarian mode. I got to go save this energy and you just keep getting burned and I got to show them what real love look like. No, you got, sometimes you got to tell people. And so that is not my definition of love. That's not my definition of trust. That's my, that's not my definition of gratitude, forgiveness, connection, compassion. Sometimes you just have to come out and tell people. And so you're on the other side of your learning. You're continuing to learn. So I do see more money coming across your path, um, um, uh, Aquarius. And so Source is like, just don't give it a whole lot of thought. You know, you're still learning. You're still growing. You all are ahead of, you know, the rest of mankind. And so this is just something else that you're learning about 
this place on earth here. Like how, um, how you're just learning more about other human beings, right? So you're not lumping all zodiac signs, like all air signs or all fire signs or all earth or all, you know, uh, water signs or all fixed signs or all cardinal signs or all mutable signs in one box. They're all unique. So if it's outside of your universe, I'm not judging those signs. I'm only judging the inner the energies that I've allowed in my universe. And if they're now that they're outside of my universe, they're out of my judgment. This is, you know, so here we have the ace of pentacles and also the ace of cups. Main thing is, is that source wants you to protect your water, protect your emotions. Somebody is a lot happier without certain energies in their universe, and you've worked very hard to get there. So congratulations to you all, Aquarius. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Let's see what else we got going on here. What, let's see what else we have going on here. So make sure, like I said before, I'm going, like I said, because, because it's, we started out with fire energy, and you're getting a lot of messages that's coming through here about energies who have this God complex, who just kind of sort of sits there with just this, it's all about me, no matter what, you know, that type of energy. I'm going to put, um, like I said, meditation videos, a meditation link uh, to a guided meditation video below. That particular channel has guided meditations for all of the chakras. So for instance, if we're talking about money and you feel like you need to get your root chakra and money is not just paper and coins, it's also stability, security, you know, loyalty is also money. Like when you think about how is it's valuable, the value of having loyal relationships in your life by your definition of loyalty, the value of having secure, stable, um, patient relationships in your life there's something you can't put a price tag on it. That's also money, right? Um, people who are successful in their careers, just like you're successful in your career, they don't see you as a comp. They don't see you as competition. They can they can sit out in the audience and cheer for you, just like you can sit out in the audience and cheer for them. Um, people who are prosperous by their definition of prosperity, um, and so they don't see your money or your success as a threat. They don't see your house as a threat or the zip code you live in as a threat because for them, they're prosperous in their own way. It doesn't matter if you all live in two different zip codes. It doesn't matter. They are in alignment with them. They are in alignment. They're uh, operating in their purpose. So those are the types of relationships that Source is trying to bring it across your path. So if you need to listen to Root Chakra Guided Meditation, like I said before, I'll put one uh, link for the guided meditation. And then when you go to that channel, you can see all the other uh, chakras guided meditation uh, videos for those as well. So this is how you're going to be taking action during this full moon phase while you're getting your rest and while you're protecting your energy and while you're healing and while you're thinking about what I need to release and what I need to banish out of my universe altogether. So I can feel like when I close out this cycle, I feel, I feel like I've closed out these cycles in love and in peace peace of mind, right? So here we have the death rebirth card. So something is definitely ending. And what's ending is that the unhealthy and wounded emotions about situations, you're banishing those. You're releasing all of those as you are closing out cycles. And what? In love. This is attached to the planet Saturn. This is your other ruling planet. Saturn is a very serious planet. It's a planet of rules. It's a planet of structure. So somebody is definitely thinking about getting a more, having a more structured life. Right, Aquarius? So you all are a sign. Since we're talking about the moon in Aquarius, you, you're feel, already feeling the effects of the moon in Aquarius before we get into the other part of this. Um, Aquar I mean, Aquarius is ruled by not only Saturn, but also Uranus. Uranus is the planet of change and liberation. So when you think about uh, the planet Uranus, think about... Uh, someone who is radical, someone who is independent. This is this is the planet that gives you that feeling that you're sometimes feeling radical or independent or free-spirited or even rebellious or I'm coming across with these innovative ideas or originality. That's Uranus. Also insight and revolution and intellect and that rational planet. It's also the planet of invention, of being unconventional, right? So it adds a little 
extra flair to who you are, Aquarius. Like not so super serious, but I feel like I need to break out, you know, that kind of energy, right? And I need to be free. So this is where you're celebrating yourself. And so you're giving, this moon in Aquarius is gonna give people some kind of insight into the mind of an Aquarius. So here's the first question. Well, let me just last say this. Um, Uranus is also that planet that causes people to assume that you all are emotionally detached. So people will start to get a feel for the innovative, the way you think Aquarius. So people are not always assuming, okay, Aquarius is just a cold hearted and just mentally or emotionally detached from reality. That's the planet Uranus, right? So here are the questions, Aquarius. Um, first question is, what can you do to use your passion for serving on a large scale? Second question is, are you creating space for yourself to connect with your inner alchemist and innovator? Third question is, are you ready to think outside the box and delete old beliefs and rules to write your own? The fourth question is, is using technology a drain or gain for you? And then last but not least is, are you ready to start a group in your community to initiate and create positive change on a local or global scale? And what could that focus be? You all are a not only a thinking sign, but you are also a focused action oriented sign. So it's like, okay, I can't see a human being, you know, or I, I can't see something having to do with human rights and not want to do something about it. So this is where people are going to kind of get into, you know, understand the mind of an Aquarius, that pull, you know, it's not like you don't care. Obviously you have extra water because you're a water bearer. You're an air sign, but you're a water bearer. So you have extra emotions um, and, and extra compassion and extra joy to give and, and extra, you know, um, healthy emotions to give. But if you're allowing people to project their negativity onto that, then you also have the other side of that extra codependency, extra, extra toxic emotions to give, um, extra clinginess to give, you know, that kind of thing, extra moodiness to give if you're around certain types of energy. So you got to protect your water. So we also have um, Queen of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles, King of Swords, and also the King of Cups. So whenever you feel like you need to wash off your root chakra, then you need to get near water, drink more water, which I talk about a lot, you know, maybe listening to, you know, some guided sacral chakra music. So if you try to get your solar plexus chakra, that's that fire right there under that, that, that breastplate right up under the, the, like that core strength, right? You know, you hear core strengthening exercises and things like that. You can listen to, uh, solar plexus, uh, guided, uh, chakra music, and then get, get your heart chakra in alignment. You can listen to guided chakra music until you feel like, okay, I don't need to be guided anymore. I fully understand. Um, and then your root chakra, listen to that root chakra guided meditation music. And then your sacral chakra that sits right there in your pelvic bowl. So that root chakra sits right at that tailbone that's developed between the ages of zero and seven. So sources said to you, your reputation is intact right? See, letting these type of energy stay in your universe will try to make you feel guilty for cutting them off. That would be like somebody, and again, only take what resonates with you. That would be like somebody having a narcissistic parent that you're cutting off. So they're running around making everybody believe, oh, you know, my child doesn't like me and, you know, or, you know, my my daughter or son-in-law, they don't respect me. They can't, but they're not telling other people what they did when you gave them access to your universe or, you know, an elder or somebody in your family, they just blurting out and just saying anything and you walking away feeling low self-esteem because they, they, they didn't choose their words carefully. They never considered how it made you feel. They don't care if you're depressed or whatever. And all, you know, that's disrespectful, all the gaslighting and all of that stuff. So, or it could be a manager that you work with. Oh, this employee, they don't know what they're doing. They're telling you one thing, but in front of, in meetings, they're just embarrassing you. I mean, that kind of stuff. People are using their status, you know, as it, as justification for hurting you. So, and those are just some examples, right? So anyway, we have the three of pentacles and also the queen of pentacles. So I see your money is perfectly aligned here. And I do see your reputation is still intact. You know, somebody was wondering, somebody, people misunderstand me. Those people are outside of your universe. So you don't even have to worry about what they think or what they're saying. You're already wise enough to know what, the, what you're dealing with. You're already wise enough to know what you're dealing with. So there's uh, some energies, like I said before, 
you know, those types of energies will try to make you feel like you're the person that's holding a grudge when in reality, they're outside of your universe. So you really don't care at all. It's outside of your universe. You can send out messages of world peace. And if they're in receiving mode, they'll get it. They'll benefit from your messages of world peace. So, like I said before, they will try to ram their ways in, way into your life if they're fixated on the way that they think and you're fixated on operating in love, love and peace. So, again, outside of your universe, not your problem. All right, Aquarius. Aquarius, Aquarius, Aquarius. And then also, like with one of the questions when I talked about technology, is using technology a drain or gain? So also, it makes a difference of what you're watching on social media. What are you allowing in your ear gate and your eye gate, right? And some things, yeah, they're funny, but then some things are just when people are attacking people on social media and they're, you know, um, doing all kinds of things that they could keep, it, I mean... It, they could keep off of social media, but they want the world to know certain things. Is that really something that you want to align your spirit with? Is it a waste of your energy or time? Or is it, you know, giving you new ways to be more creative? All right. So, all right, Aquarius. This is nice. All right. So we have the king of coins, right? King of pentacles. And this is the direction that you're headed in. So you got the king and queen of coins and pentacles. So not only is your reputation still intact, your gifts are still intact. Somebody is definitely um, high priestess energy, maybe all the clairs as well as psychic energies. Um, and I'll talk more about the different types of psychic gifts on my second channel, but uh, you may be all the clairs, clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, claircognizant. You got a lot of, like I said, spiritual gifts. And, um, and so those are things that you want to focus on. You want to focus on um, your spiritual gifts. You want to focus on your spiritual gifts and not looking for their approval. You don't need their approval. They're outside of your universe. And if and what's interesting about this, Aquarius, and I, want, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this because you got a lot of blessings coming your way. And so the main thing I want you to get from this entire reading is that it is okay to leave them outside of your universe. Those bullying spirits, those spirits who feel like, they, they got to just ram their way in your life to get their kind of clothes. They want you to say, I don't like you. They want you to get into an argument with them. They want you to say, and you're operating in agape love. They're trying to, they're giving you way too much power. So you don't need, you don't need to be empowered by them. Their energy, like I said, out of alignment. So I do see somebody could be at a crossroad right now trying to decide which direction to go through. And I see you winning. You're being rewarded by take, you know, ascending to your highest frequency and staying in your purpose. That's why I talk about knowing what your purpose is. You don't need their approval. God has already approved you for an enormous amount of wealth. So yes, those energies will think that you're looking down on them and thinking that you're judging them, but you're not. Here we have two of coins, more money coming. Here we also have the ace of swords. So the ace of swords is really about motive. You ask yourself, what is my motive? What would be my motive for going back to a, a Freddy Krueger nightmare? What would be my motive? That wouldn't even make any sense to you as the smartest sign in the zodiac to go back to even thinking about it, right? Source just wants you to have compassion for these energies because they're going through a tower moment. Things are not working out the way some of these people had intended. And so, again, outside of your universe. That's outside of your universe. You're a very compassionate person, but it's outside of your universe. You don't talk. Some of you all don't talk to some of these people. You don't have any dealings with these people at all. That's outside of your universe right and so um like i said it doesn't take away from your compassion at all not even in the least bit does it take away from your compassion because you're you were already that's why some energies want you they want to be able to say oh well let me let me share a sob story about me well you didn't know this about me you don't know that about me it's not that you're not a caring person Aquarius. it's outside of your universe when you learn, when you know how to see things in the spirit realm before they actually happen to you, you can avoid a lot of things. You can avoid a lot of things. And so somebody has learned that. And that's why you're on your, your horse and you're just getting as far away from that as possible. All right. So we have the three of clubs. We have the um, the joker of spades. We have the queen of hearts. We have the, um, the eight of spades, the three of spades, and then also the nine of spades. All right, nightmare, 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 right? To even overthink it is self-sabotage right here, eight of spades. To even overthink this is self-sabotage. 
because the joke would be on you. You've already been disappointed and heartbroken. You've already interacted with energies that you just see that spirit. You see, I mean, somebody, I mean, when that spirit of sight, that's why we have this high priestess energy right here. You can just see it all over them. Whether you have, whether it's direct or indirect, you just see the spirit all over them. Here we also have the queen of hearts. And so again, queen of compassion. Double, double down. You have compassion towards the energy because you already know that there's such a difference in the 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 meaning of you know the the definition of like I said certain things within the chakra. You are a person who, like I said before, when you're creating your alf your affirmations, Aquarius. For your root chakra, you want to make I am affirmations for your root chakra. For your uh, for your solar plexus, I feel. Right. So these energies that say when I'm around certain energies, I feel um, rigid. I feel dehydrated, spiritually dehydrated. I feel fear of intimacy around some of these energies. I feel um, um, some of it can even cause you to have like uh, hip issues. You know, being around these certain people because it's right there. Your sacral chakra is right there at the solar plexus chakra. When you are around certain types of energies, you don't feel willful at all. You don't. You you feel like whatever I've done, they skip right over that. Like if you've accomplished certain things, they'll skip right over it as if none of it matters. Let's say you served in the military. They will acknowledge everybody but you during that time to say, they won't ever say thank you for your service at all. They'll acknowledge everybody but you. Or let's say you've won some kind of an award. It's always something wrong with what you've done. So your solar plexus chakras are out of alignment being around them. You know, it's in terms of love, when you say, I love, these are affirmations you're creating when you say uh, your, your uh, heart chakra, I love. Like, I love love. I love trust. I love healing people who are healing themselves. I love, you know, people who are, uh, who show gratitude. You know, I love compassion. I love connection, right? I love forgiveness, right? And so again, the I love. And so their definition of forgiveness is the same, you know, is at least they're open to hearing what your definition of forgiveness is. And so then we're talking about your, your affirmations for your throat chakra. I speak, right? But it's not just that I speak, just like ear, nose, and throat, <laughs> doctor. Not only am I speaking, I'm listening with my spiritual ears. When something doesn't smell right, I'm paying attention to all of that, right? My throat chakra. I don't have a problem audibly expressing myself in love, right? Um, and then with your um, your third eye chakra, I see. This is your spiritual sight. I see visions. You know, I have visions. I, my intuition, I'm tuned into my intuition. That's the voice of source inside of me. I listen to my dreams. I jot down my dreams. I, I don't have to know how the dream began and how the dream ended. It's just key pieces of that dream I remember. So I'm going to jot down those. I'm going to take the action before I get out of the bed. I'm going to jot down my dreams, maybe in the E section, the electronic section of my notepad and jot down those dreams. I see, I have insight, inner sight, right? I see things, you know, I, I see, I am perceptive, right? Um, I, I, I see things that my, because of my psychic abilities. I just, I see things, right? And then with your, uh, your crown chakra, this is an understanding, an understanding, an overstanding of things, right? So I understand, understand, overstand things, right? I'm looking for unification. I'm seeking wisdom constantly. I am aware. I'm spiritually aware. I'm aware also of my intelligence, right? I believe in miracles. I believe in a blissful life, right? So that's where somebody is right now. So yes, you want to get all of those things in alignment and you want to make sure to get those energies out of your life that's not on that same path. Or if they're so far behind, it's like it's just like carrying a, a ball and chain around your ankle and it's slowing you down from the assignments that Source has put in your life, Aquarius. Then it's time, like I said before, to just release it. But somebody has gotten to a point where you can see energies all over people and they may think that you're judging them only if they want access to your universe. But outside of your universe, they're not under any judgment from you. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. So hopefully that'll make somebody sleep better at night. Bonfire. That's right. Bonfire. 
It's through remembering that you will wake the ritual of your existence and be reborn in a mighty celebration. That's cleansing by fire. That's right. You're cleansing by fire. Staying in your light. So when I tell you Aquarius that there are some people, like I said, that want access back into your universe, the answer should be a resounding no. A no in love, just no period, not no but. No California knows with your, you know, California rolls with your no. Just no in love. I've already experienced that. I already know. I already know how it would take me back to a nightmare. No, thank you. Detachment. Perfect. That's right. Detachment. With detachment, you finally feel whole inside with or without the fulfillment of a particular desire. Ironically, that's when you that's when it's fulfilled. Right. So, yeah, you've already detached from certain energies. And so you feel fulfilled without that. And it's like I never knew I would feel this way without certain energies, whether it's certain love interests, past love interests, past uh, association with certain kind of groups or certain groups that you were in, um, certain uh, relatives. Yeah. So for somebody, it feels like um, it feels like your, like I said, your uh, solar plexus, I mean, your sacral chakra is aligned. And so when we're talking about sex, we're talking about your sacral chakra. Because your sacral chakra, that's where that pelvic bowl is. That's where you feel. You feel um, that oneness with yourself. You feel joy. You feel, create, you feel creative, more creative. You feel more adaptable without certain energies. You feel more sensual more fertile, like you're planting seeds and you put in fresh water in that, that soil to grow those seeds. You feel a healthy emotional range without certain types of energies around you. You feel like your sexuality is intact around certain energies. Um, and so whatever that may be, you feel healthy around w without certain energies, you know, in your space. So like I said, you, you are, you are in, in the right direction. You're divinely protected. You don't need to go back to certain energies to be in around certain energies at all, ever. So like I said, I will put a link below in the description, check it out and see if that helps. But you can look at, listen to any channel you want. I mean, when I say in terms of meditation, some people, you may have your favorite meditation channel, but that's just, you know, guided, just in case somebody's pretty new to this. Here we have, um, I try not to be controlled by my fear, but informed by it. So if I'm really afraid, I know this terror is telling me that there's something to be gained from courage. That's from Amanda Gorman. And then on the back of the card, it reads, focus on your breathing. Think about something you want to do, but haven't because fear has held you back. Picture yourself stepping forward with confidence to achieve your goal. Allow yourself to feel the positive, the power and positive energy overcoming your fear. And then stay in this vision for as long as you can before opening your eyes. The power of visualization. So see yourself detached from those energies. See yourself tossing those fear, doubt, uncertainty attached to certain people, places, and things into that bonfire, into your burning bowl, and release it in love so that you can continue on in this cycle in peace. All right. So this cycle closes out on the 17th of on the 16th of july but we'll just keep it moving forward so that's what i have for you aquarius let's pull a number and then last card and close it out so you're doing a complete detachment from those types of energies and even if loved ones are connected to these types of energies you're still on the other side of that that nine of wands you're on the other side and you continue to move forward holding that torch in your hand so they'll see it. They will hear it. They will hear your voice. They'll hear the love in your voice. They'll hear the compassion in your voice. They won't hear the, I told you so. Why didn't you listen? Because you're on the other side of something. So you can continue being a light. Number three, I am charismatic. 
Expression comes naturally to you. You are very skilled at communicating your thoughts through conversation and creative pursuits. You are able to get others on board with your ideas. And number three, so somebody definitely learned from their own past. Somebody's exes are definitely trying to get back in contact with you. Um, and none of that matters. You've moved on. Um, uh, for somebody, and I'm, I'm not going to keep this rolling too much longer, but for somebody, somebody felt very unprotected in their romantic relationship with somebody, like very, very uncovered, felt unprotected. Um, and those energies are awakening to what they, what they did of just leaving you unprotected and uncovered and attacked those feelings of you were being attacked because eventually they had to sit with self still that that is the door is closed the ship has sailed you have moved on you've learned how to find your strength within yourself through your purpose all right let's see what else we have here so detachment 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 last card growth affirmations for growth I am a work in progress. I release old habits and create new trails. Each day I am getting better. I'm in charge of the direction of my life. I am not defined by my past. I grow through my struggles. Roadblocks create opportunity. That is what I have for you. And I will see you all on Freedom Friday again. Happy Midweek Wednesday. It may be still Tuesday, the 4th of July. But this reading is for the 5th of July through the 5th of August. We know that the number 5... Um, you're at a mid means you're at a midpoint. Number five is a representation of the pivot point representing versatility, movement, decisions, risk, and a new beginning of some kind. So welcome to the other side. You made it that victory, that victory card right there. Let me know that somebody made it to the other side in the beginning of the reading. That's what I have for you Aquarius and I'll see you on Friday. Bye.